Are there any questions? There's a gentleman at, at the back. Thank you. I have a question for uh, Minister um, Borletti uh, Butoni. Um, I'm Chris Marinello from the um, Art Claim Database and Art Recovery International. This morning there's news out of Christie's where a number of objects were pulled from sale for having been matched with the Bekina and Giacomo uh, Medici archives. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what your position is, what the ministry's position is on making those archives public so that the trade could search and do due diligence checks uh, against that archive. Uh, well, I have to say I have no idea what is the position of the Minister. You would forgive me because we haven't discussed about this matter, but I suppose the position of the Minister could be easily to make these archives open. I suppose. Madam Haji Tofi. Michel Van Rijn, several of us in this room know him. We also know that you showed a, a picture of uh, the uh, uh, Peg Goldberg mosaics. Well, he sold them to her, and then he told the FBI she had them, and so he made money both ways. My question to you is, I think that dealing with informants is the right way to recover many of these sorts of things that are stolen, looted antiquities and such. But how do you resolve the moral dilemma of dealing with somebody like Michel Van Rijn, who is responsible with others for stealing them in the first place, selling them on, and then telling authorities for his own rewards where they are? He works both sides of the street. How do you, how do you deal with that moral dilemma? I actually thank you very much for this question. But uh, the destruction of cultural heritage was very extensive. And indeed, Mr. von Rijn and Mr. Dickman were key players in uh, selling the artifacts. Cyprus has never cooperated in a way on the expense of possessors. Every time we found an artifact, we would try and negotiate, convince people to give it back because it's stolen, or we would start civil actions. The fact that the legislation is so weak that we could not bring to justice the art dealers is what forced me in 1997 to speak to his Beatitude at the time and say, look, it is an international ring of art traffickers that if we don't take one to work with the authorities, with the police, to set up the others, we will never get to the bottom of it. And my moral dilemma and my compatriots was, how can I go and start civil case and prosecute the ones who bought the artifacts when the dealers are free? And until today, the system allows them free. Even after the stingray in Germany, the German legislation says that if you trade stolen treasures, that you can prove you have them in your possession for more than 10 years, you are free. So all those artifacts, after 18 years of civil case, Last uh, few months ago, some of them came back and the rights of the traffickers were equal to the rights of the people of Cyprus. I Thank agree. You. Areas of improvement. <laughs> More questions? I can't see. Hands very well. There's a, a gentleman there. Yes. Um, it's a question you mentioned signatories to, uh, to the campaign through UNESCO to, um, to campaign against all this looting. I noticed one of the signatories, Russia, is guilty itself of looting. During the Soviet period, they looted anemically Poland, Germany, Eastern Germany, and many other territories in the Eastern Bloc, and they still have the Trojan Treasury in Moscow. The other point is that Putin is also looting a lot of the territory. Well, I think that this question should be asked to them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, I can only share some concerns in front of the contradictions of the behavior of some countries which 
make some declaration on one hand, but maybe on the other they behave in a different way. But again, the reason why this happened should be asked to them. Well, I think you know that it's very difficult to refuse countries to agree to our proposal, and uh, I just mentioned some of these countries, uh, among which uh, Russia and uh, China and other countries I've mentioned before. Uh, there are more of them, and I think it would be difficult to say don't underline or don't sign our proposal. Now, I don't know which would be the final list of the country which will support our proposal. Uh, again, I can see easily the contradiction that you mentioned, which is very clear, uh, why this happened and why they've been decided to support Itali Italy's proposal is something that maybe, again, should be asked to them. Thank you. Okay, we have um, two questions here and then two over here, I believe. So. Good morning. My name is Walter Pilich, and you may speak uh, later on on Bosnia. But I have a question to Mr. Simpson regarding Afghanistan and uh, the return of uh, artifacts uh, like the Buddha statue. Are there any precautions uh, being taken in case the Taliban are back in power, or at least in some sort of a power sharing uh, situation that uh, things will not repeat itself? Thank you. I think None of us can foretell the future, or I don't think we can. Uh, the authorities in Kabul have made steps, great steps, uh, to safeguard the security of their museum in Kabul. They have built a big blast wall outside the front. They have a permanent garrison. Uh, and they're confident enough there to open new galleries. I was there in November, and there are five or so galleries, mostly new, two celebrating new discoveries of Gandharan sculpture, which completely change our appreciation of Buddhist art in Afghanistan, I think. So they're confident, and they're, they're the caretakers of their culture. They have learnt, and this is, I think, a very good lesson for everyone, that it's very important to have a good digital inventory of your collections. And so they're working with the Oriental Institute in Chicago to make a new catalogue of everything that they have with photographs. And that was a, a very key part of our work in terms of cataloguing material that we could identify for sending back, that we could make a, an illustrated inventory and that that inventory should be published. So that if the worst thing happens again, I mean, does lightning strike twice in the same place? I don't know, but it shouldn't. At least you know what actually came from that museum and how that should be separated from what one might call the background noise of material that's come out a long time before or might still be coming out. I hope that answers the question. I had a question from the Cultural Minister of Italy. You mentioned something about um, war crimes against humanity, including cultural heritage destruction. I wonder if such a case could be backdated to actually charge, uh, simply because there's such a charge of um, double standards, could one go back and actually charge Bush and Blair for their for what they did in Iraq, which actually has led to the beginning of IS and so forth. So would there be a consideration to actually take a case against those two for um, crimes against humanity, which happened in Iraq? Well, I think that the subject that you open is such a wide one that would need a very, very deep and serious confrontation. Uh, my the proposal I was bringing to this audience was simply regarding what's happening now in uh, Iraq, Syria, and Libya, and how to face the future 
of these three countries, which hopefully one day will be able to start again, and they will have no sign left of their cultural identity. But uh, I agree that the, 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 the subject that you have raised now is extremely important and uh, would really need a deep thought about it. It's not what we have proposed up to now, but clearly uh, the door is open for a confrontation on this matter. Can I add something to that? Uh, unfortunately, we live in The Hague, where all the war tribunals are, and the International Criminal Court. For your information, there are, in the statutes of ICC, there is room to prosecute for cultural cleansing, and also in the tribunal of former Yugoslavia. However, to date, no prosecutor has brought to, to justice any criminals for cultural cleansing on its own. Only in the case of uh, former Yugoslavia, there were cases in relation to other crimes. But ICC is not recognized by all countries, as we know, including the US and, and many other. And uh, we've got a long way to go. And normally they don't work backwards, it's from now onwards. England. And a question for Beth that applies to all panel members. I wonder if it's useful to begin to distinguish between activities directed at and those that incidentally affect. Mm. It is, mm, that's a really good point. Um, mm. I think all of us need to be mindful of the help that legal frameworks and good, good codes of practice can give us to our work. But this distinction between starting from now and looking forward and dealing with the issues, the problems that we inherit when we begin to look at a subject is a really, uh, a really intense one right across, uh, right across collecting, collecting and law, I would say. So, um, of course we need to look at what's intentional and what's accidental, but with the guidance that we have from the time we are now, we need to begin by putting our house in order to the best of our ability. That gets, that's what I can say. But I think the discussion, discussions mm. like today will highlight areas of improvement. And for example, the question before about database, databases, there are a number of databases and there are a number mm. of uh, individuals out there and institutions who are doing marvelous work. However, you will see that there are difficulties mm. and areas that we could work better. For example, how to share databases, even this would be very police important. databases, this would be very important. and how to harmonize legislation for cultural heritage. You will see that even within the European Union, you have different national laws, and uh, we need time. To, I, th I guess time is needed. I, I, I would and like this to is one of the reasons why to recuperate sometimes works of art is very difficult, mm -hmm. because despite our police, for example, can get what this object is, to get it back, the difference in legislation in other countries makes it very difficult. But when there's a will, there's a way. And for Cyprus, there was a will, and we even worked with one of the dealers and the police to bring the, to expose the problem. So I think there's a lot of will here. We just have to find a way by the end of the day. <laughs> One more question over here, two. It was actually on that last point, and we, we've heard about the sort of cultural looting and destruction that's taken place in, if you like, historic conflict zones like Bosnia and, and Cyprus, um, and the fact that much of the looted art uh, remains very much at large. And of course, this sends out a very negative message to current conflict zones and future conflict zones uh, where the cultural looting is currently taking place. And, and the question is specifically this, that what specific uh, legislative steps um, should be taken uh, by governments or international bodies um, to, to really nail this problem. Um, it's open to whoever, whoever wants to answer. Thank you. I really believe that uh, cultural cleansing should be crime against humanity, and I'm looking for brave uh, prosecutors who are going to bri bring this to justice. That's the only way to go forward. Of course, there's a lot more, like prevention, etc. but I think we can start from uh, that. 
Okay. Um, I read earlier that, that cultural heritage crime has been with us for many years. Of course, we know that, and this session has really demonstrated that. But the only thing that has really changed is communication. That, that those crimes are now communicated extremely quickly by those perpetrating the crimes uh, and by those suffering them. But maybe the thing that this session has highlighted is that our own communication hasn't always taken advantage of technology. We're still not sharing the information we have with a broad sector of the cultural community. We're not sharing lost data, objects that have been looted um, as quickly and as efficiently as we could. And maybe that's a, a lesson that we can take forward. Um, can I ask you all to uh, join me in thanking our, our speakers from the first session? <laughs>